Live Laugh Larceny discusses true petty crimes that may be disturbing to some. Or could be easy listening to all you psychopaths out there. All stories are based on actual events. Eh, but details may vary. Listener discretion is not advised. Laugh. Larceny. Welcome to Live Laugh Larceny, the show your parents listen to after sex. <laughs> this is Trevin. And I'm Amanda. Mom and Dad, please don't do that. <laughs> Whoo! My bad. And I am Amanda. Don't know if I said that. I don't know if you did either. I was so caught off guard. So Trevin. Yeah. Do you have a dreadful dilemma this week? I have a dreadful dilemma that has been... Haunting me all damn week. Do tell. We've been like nothing on Instagram this week because I have just been dealing with other stuff. But I got served a poopy flavored lollipop in my life (laughs) and it comes in the form of car problems. Oh, God, that is a poopy lollipop. Emily and I, we just spent the day together. You or us three did. And we didn't slip this up to you at all, surprisingly. So last week was nothing but car problems for me. Oh, God. I got up Tuesday morning. I went to start my car. Nothing happened. It didn't click. It didn't do anything. I thought it maybe just needed a jump start, even though I knew I left nothing on. Couldn't get it to work. Luckily, it's a Ford, so they make it very hard for you to move it when it doesn't want to work for you. Mm -hmm. So I got it out of my garage. Had to pay to get it towed a mile and a half to the shop. $95. $95. Oh, God. I was going to ask. Uh, so I had to miss a whole day of work to do this. Oh, my God. Oh, so that was the day that you're like, I'm unexpectedly at home. Yes. Okay. I never pushed. I don't know yeah. why. Usually I do. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's never good things. I'm usually like, what's going on? <laughs> so paid $95, got it towed to the shop. You can't put it in neutral by just pushing a little button. I have to pull up a panel and then push a button up inside the shifter to let me put it in neutral. Personal. Yeah. <laughs> I had been fighting it all day. We get it on the tow truck. It gets there. The second we drop it off, I have to put the key in to do this. And then it stops reading gears completely. Oh, my God. So when you want to pull your key out, you put it in park and pull it out. Well, now it says you're not in park anymore. It thinks it's in drive or something. Oh my so God. it wouldn't let my key out. Oh, my God. So they're closing. The only guy who's there is not a tech. He comes out and talks to me. He's like, hey, how can I help you? And I told him, he's like, shit, I don't know anything about cars. Sorry. He said, you're good to leave your key here and leave your car unlocked if you want. But it's at your discretion. And if something bad happens to your car, it's, you know, not my problem. So it was going to be outside? Yeah. It wasn't going to be in the shop? No. Ah. All the bays were full. Oh, no. Trevin. So I sat there and I was already so sweaty. It was one of those really hot days. (laughs) My face was already like beet red, sweaty. And I stayed out there for an extra hour trying to get my car to release the key. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Trevin. This is horrible. I finally cleaned out my whole car. (laughs) And it was like, whatever, if somebody breaks in, they're taking a pair of old shoes and that's about it. (laughs) Left. I called the next day. They said, oh, we're having a hard time getting it into the shop because they didn't figure out the little trick I figured out to get it neutral. I said, look it up on YouTube. It'll show you how to do it. Next day, they did it. They said, yeah, we think your TCM went out, which is your transmission control module. Oh, God. He said, but the good thing is they're really bad on these cars. I drive a Ford Fiesta. And they said, there's like a recall where you can get one replaced for free. He's like, so this is actually kind of good news for you. Said, but we can't do it here. That has to go to a Ford directly. Oh, my God. So you had to get it towed again? So I had to get it towed again. No. But first, I had to get it to a Ford. So I called the Ford close to me. And they said, oh, our transmission guy is booked all the way till December. (gasps) I'm like, well, I can't do that. So I called another one way north and they said, yeah, we can do it Tuesday. Oh, So I towed my car there. (laughs) $150. But who's keeping track? Yeah. I said, they think it's this TCM issue. I hear that it's pretty common. He's like, oh, yeah, it's common. Mm. He said, but that part since COVID happened has been on like national back orders really bad. They need these four when they're making new ones. Okay. So I guess it's like every time they make five, 
four go towards new ones and like one goes towards people who are on the back order yeah. list. So there's been stories of people saying, oh, my car sat in the shop for four months before the part came. Oh, God. It would be a four month problem that's free uh-huh. or a very expensive something, but I can at least get it back. What are you driving then? You see, this was a funny thing, too, because I was going to say not very perceptive because you walked oh, right by that car. OK, this is a big fault of mine. Mm-hmm. I am the least observant human being in my whole entire family. Okay. Yeah. My daughters, my one year old is more observant than I am, but go on. There's a gray Honda in my garage right now. My friend at work has a spare one, but he said you can drive it. So, Oh, that's nice. I've got that. My goal is see what they say Tuesday. And if they say it's that, I'll just say, Hey, will you guys buy this off of me? Because yeah. you guys have the resources to take care of it. Nice. So daddy's getting ready to <laughs> take on a car payment because Oof. I'm going to get something new. Yeah. You need AC. My God. You've gone how long without AC in your car living in the Midwest? Uh, Four or five years. No. I've had the car for eight and I think I've had more years of no AC than no. with it. One of our listeners actually sent me a DM because I had let it slip in one of our episodes a couple months back and I had just said something about not having AC, but you didn't make a big deal about it was just yeah. in passing and they had said trevin you still didn't get that fixed like i got listeners that are saying what's your listeners problem, i'm with you what is with this boy he's torturing himself at this point it's true well that's dreadful trevin boy is it so mine have been very very lighthearted lately but mine right now i was feeling like a really bad friend I was in my shower and I was looking at all my different aspects of life, you know, wife, friend, mom, business, all these different areas. Okay. And I was looking at all of them (laughs) and I felt like none of them were fully where they needed to be, but there were definitely some that were higher than others. Okay. Are you saying priority wise? Just where I was succeeding at. Oh, you're really kind of doing uh, like self-assessing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I've never really done this before ever, but I was looking at all of them because within the past like couple years, I've realized that my life is never going to be perfectly balanced. It's not ever, ever, ever. And I have really embraced it. But here's my thing. Whenever I see an aspect really struggling, I just have to remember to kind of rebalance that weight. There's always going to be something that has to come above something else. Yes. And that's just what it is. But I need to do a better job at making sure that at least things go through the rotation and that everything gets some love. The thing I was feeling the best at was mom. I feel like I've been a really good mom lately, honestly. Oh, you're so present with your kids, for well, sure. Well, there's sometimes though, where I haven't been. There's been times where I've been really hustling on a project and being like, okay, kids, whatever. Okay, I got to go. We're really preoccupied with stresses. But lately... I feel like it was really important for me to just gather my shit a bit in that department. But I was like, you know what? You're really killing it there. But like every other department kind of sucks right now. Mm -hmm. But the friend one was basically non-existent. Yeah, podcasting and being a wife and all that wasn't being super productive or good either. (laughs) But the friend one was non-existent. I mean, I wasn't reaching out to any friends. So recently, that's been my new thing where I'm like, okay, I need to set a time for some friendships or at least reach out to my friends. Like my friend Sarah just had a baby. I need to plan a trip to visit her. Mm -hmm. I need to text my friends back and just try and make them more of a priority or check in more. That's what I'm trying to do. But I just have to remind myself it's always going to be revolving and everything at least needs to get some love. Right. So that's where I'm at. Yeah, there's just not enough hours in the day. Yeah. Like, I know there's that meme floating around that's just like, oh, I got to get eight hours of sleep and I got to work on things that matter to me and I got to be a partner and I got to have a job. And yeah, Yeah. there's just so many of these things that we have to do and prioritizing. And I'm like that, too. I'm not a list maker per se. Like, I don't write them down like I know a lot of people like to do. Mm -hmm. But I do make priority lists in my head. Mm -hmm. And Emily and I had an argument a couple weeks ago about doing the dishes and it was during a a very stressful point where I was getting ready to let go of a couple shows that I wasn't going to edit anymore. I'm always usually the guy who does the dishes in the house Mm -hmm. and I hadn't been doing them. And it was just like, Hey, you're not doing I'm like, Oh yeah, I knew that. That was in my list in my head that that thing went to the very bottom because I couldn't do everything. Yeah. 
with you, I just feel like you're floating a bunch of subjects around in your head. And yeah, like you said, putting them in the rotation. Yes. I kind of visualize it in a way like that as well. That's exactly what it was. I just felt like my kids really needed me during this really big transition. And so I was like, OK, you're doing that. That's great. You're getting up early, getting the kid. You're doing the pickup drop off. line. <laughs> <laughs> but then I was like, wow, everything else is slacking. So I've recently went to lunch with friends. I've checked in on friends. I'm just trying. I'm trying, Trevin. It it is also interesting to hear this from you as well, because, you know, thinking about it, that's true. You really haven't been. Yeah. Amanda's always been the person who she is like the heart and soul of the friend group to where some of us people are friends just because of Amanda. She was always the center of it. And her house was always the party house. Yes. For so long. It's like, when does Amanda have a party? And now it's basically... <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's usually Halloween, maybe birthdays. a Christmassy one. Yeah. If you're a good enough friend, you're going to the children's birthdays. <laughs> yep. And then maybe if her or Jordan are having a milestone birthday, which you were supposed to have one. But Oh, my God. I know. I know. I haven't had a birthday party in a really long time because I'm always ill. Yeah. <laughs> and not the cool 90s skateboarding ill. <laughs> Thank you for kind of relating with me on that one. I'm just going to be a juggler. Do, 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 do. I think we all are kind of forced to be. Yeah. So today, Trevin, we are going to be doing some trivia. Whoa, 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 Trevin, we do not have the rights to say that. Uh, let's have a fun time. We are. And I think when I brought that up to you about 20 minutes ago, you were surprised by that. Oh, my God. <laughs> You guys, I don't know what I was thinking. That's never happened to me before. I've never come and forgotten my segment. I had a killer fact. I had top five. I had all these other things. <laughs> no trivia. But guess what? The internet works wonders. And I've actually found something really fascinating. I'm excited to figure out what this is. For some reason, I feel like you're going to know this. Okay. But it's still an interesting fact nonetheless. Are you ready? I was born ready. Disneyland's famous Pirates of the Caribbean ride used to include which real feature? Was it A, real guns, B, real skeletons, or C, real gold coins? B, skeletons. Oh my God, damn it, I thought you would know. Well, guess what, guys? He is correct. Have you rode that ride? I've never been to any Disney World or land in my life. Holy hell. Closest to Disneyland is seeing Wreck-It Ralph in theaters. Oh my God. Well, let me tell you a little bit more about this, okay? Okay. So there was a really good article on facts.net. Whoa. You don't get that URL on accident, okay? <laughs> Precisely. So... The engineers from Disney took one look at the fake skeletons that were initially brought in and thought that they weren't creepy enough. Can you just put some aging oil on it or something or stain <laughs> Paint it with tea? Paint it. You could dye it. You could shine more dramatic light on it. Yeah, we have ways of making it work. I mean, you guys are Disney. You are supposed to make things that are not alive come to life in front of our very eyes. That is the magic of the movies. Come on, Walt. This might be because prosthetics in the 1960s weren't as convincing as they are now. Okay, fair. Okay, yeah. Maybe I'll have to find some pictures and actually look at this. But to offer a more authentic experience, Disney engineers enlisted the help of University of California, LA, anatomy department for real skeletons. Mm -hmm. The article goes on. Gradually, they replaced these real skeletons with fake ones. But many believe that real skeletons remain in the attraction. Oh, so they don't even know. So nobody knows. I mean, are people going up and actually testing to see if they're real bones? Probably not. You know how all the classic movies have those hidden messages in them mm -hmm. and all that shit. I could see them being like, let's leave one of these real ones in here in the back or something. You yeah. Know? Creepy. It's all the people who step out of line at Disney. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So how did you know that? I mean, that is kind of a common thing, isn't it? That people know or no? Yeah, I've read it a couple times. Okay. But I didn't know how they got it or anything like that. Like I said, maybe once we see the pictures and I see how shitty the prosthetics were back then, mm. maybe I'll think differently. But I feel as though <laughs> the fake skeleton should have done it. It's a kid's ride. It's a ride. Yeah. Like, what are you trying to do? Scar the children, obviously. Scar the children. Hashtag scar the children. <laughs> 
Well, that's odd to me, but probably just let a beagle loose. Go uh, find the real bone. That's true. That's true. Release the dogs. Mm-hmm. Who let the dogs in? <laughs> okay. Well, I've got a trivia for you, and it actually has to do with a character that you've referenced once in one of your stories. Mm. I believe it was a personal story of yours, and it was an ex-boyfriend. Okay. And do you remember what fake name you had given this (gasps) ex-boyfriend? Rasputin. Rasputin. Oh, shit. (laughs) So I actually want to talk about his middle child, Maria Rasputin. Hmm. Maria Rasputin, middle daughter of Grigory Rasputin. The mystic monk went on to become what after her father's assassination? Is it A, a member of Hitler's cabinet, B, COO at the Ford Motor Company, or C, a lion tamer? I'm going to go with B. You are incorrect. Damn it! I I really wanted that. I wanted it so bad for multiple reasons. She's the middle child. I wanted to pick the middle one. My answer was the middle one. Usually we're on the same wavelength. I thought that it would tie into your dreadful dilemma. Yes, that was there just to trick you. Shit, I fell for that. So Maria Rasputin was actually a lion tamer. No way. I thought that was seriously the most far-fetched one. Okay. I'm actually coming from University of Bloomington, Indiana. Edu. Because that's actually where she moved to. She moved to Indiana after she fled from Russia. Whoa. So weird. So following the revolution, Maria and her husband, Boris, fled Russia. They said she pinballed through the Middle East, Prague, and Austria before finally setting up in France for a while. Boris worked at odd jobs to support his wife and two daughters, but he died of tuberculosis in 1926. Maria found employment as a cabaret dancer before joining the circus. Ooh. I guess while she was on the circus, she also did a really macabre cabaret dance of a dramatic interpretation of her dad being assassinated, which I imagine probably brought in a lot of tickets. Whoa. That was another thing, too, is like her name helped get her out there. She continued to perform for various European circuses into the 1930s. But by the mid 1930s, all of her family had already been put to death in Russia or had just died. So she moved to a city called Peru, Indiana. And she worked for the Hagenbeck Wallace Circus, which I guess was probably like the third biggest circus back in the 30s. There was Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey were Mm -hmm. there and then they were kind of the next one up. Oh, wow. But she was actually a lion tamer. One of the ads for her, like come see her at the circus and stuff. The header says Rasputin's eyes. They live on in his daughters now. The punctuation's weird on it. They live on in his daughter. Now here seeks to clear father. Underneath it, it says Maria Rasputin, daughter of Russia's mad monk, performs a man's job in training animals, <laughs> but she likes her makeup like any woman. She is pictured at her hotel after her arrival yesterday. I just wanted to bring that up, too, because the very <laughs> one way of viewing things, sexist wording is so funny. Oh, my God. They're like, yeah, she does a man's job, but she does it with a lot of makeup on her face. Yeah. Isn't that crazy that a woman can do something <laughs> that only men should be able to do? <laughs> It's like she's, this is going to come out really bad, but she's like a trained dog or something. Yeah, Yeah. that's how it comes across. It's like no other woman could ever learn these human skills. Wow, good for her. Yeah, what the heck? So yeah, she was a lion tamer. I thought that was totally made up. Yeah, that seems pretty far out there. And with our circus party coming up, I was like, what? He's just trying to mess with me. I don't know. I just did not think that was real. That is so damn cool, actually. Mm -hmm. And how eerie her father's eyes live on through her. Yeah, advertising was different back then. I love the drama. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's an intention grabber from the get. But then the deeper that I think about it, the more it really creeps me out. It really makes her a sideshow attraction just because of who her dad is. Mm -hmm. It's like, sorry, you couldn't meet this crazy dude from the past, but the closest to seeing him is seeing this woman. Yeah. Who's also doing a man's job. Yeah, (laughs) with makeup. (laughs) Oh, my. Well, you know what I think we all could use right now in this time? A moment of silence? A moment of ads. Oh. Hey Doomed Crew, Amanda hopping on here to tell you guys about a podcast that Trevin and I both love. Three Spooked Girls is a a twice-a-week true crime and paranormal podcast where they discuss a wide variety of topics, such as The Stanley Hotel, Japanese Ghosts, Casey Anthony, Ed Kemper, Tamla Horsford, and more. 
every Monday, then return every Thursday for a mini-sode from their Stabby Snippet series, a true crime case told by Jessica or Tara. Along with the facts and advocating for the victims of the cases they cover, the ghouls also bring laughs, themed drinks, and scares. Join three spooked girls anywhere you get your podcasts. Follow them on social media under the handle Three Spooked Girls. And follow Tara's TikTok for bite-sized content of cases and spooky topics at spooky underscore sleuth. Bye. We are back. And I am going first this week. And Trevin, I am excited to say that I have a listener story this week. <laughs> This email was actually sent in in the month of May. <laughs> a long ass time ago. Long time. So clearly I just wanted to point out sometimes it takes us a minute to get to listener stories. Honestly, this was one that I don't know how we both missed. I honestly don't know either because it was around the time we did our listener only episode and we were like, send those yeah. bad boys in. And then somebody did and somehow we were like, oh, sorry, wasn't checking the email after we said we would. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's pretty much what happened. Exactly. Life keeps happening too, though, but still. <laughs> so before I tell the story, though, I do want to read just the beginning of this email. Hey, Trevin and Amanda, my name is Joy. I have a story for your podcast. Actually, several stories, but I will start with this gem. I attach some of the day's pictures at the end that you're welcome to use, which pause the That's email way to your heart. Oh my God. You sent me attachments that go along with a story. Holy hell. I love you. Mm -hmm. This girl loves visuals. I do. Continuing on with the email now. I grew up in Maryland, but have lived in the Kansas City area since 2013. I just discovered your podcast last month. It's a great lighthearted escape from my normal true crime podcasts. I've been binging it and have enjoyed every episode. The whole idea of this podcast is brilliant, and I can't imagine anyone else who could pull it off better than the two of you. Hmm. I know, like, thank you. Oh, yeah, that's the end of the email. But thank you, Joy. Oh, my God. She said that I could use her name. She said that I could use the pictures. I, I didn't realize she was local. Yes. You know, I really need to follow up with Joy and be like, hey, where did you hear about us? I'm curious. I feel like we don't have much of a local presence, but... I know. A brand new local? Okay. Everyone's welcome. Everyone is welcome to join. So without any further introduction, here we go. Oftentimes on our show, we discuss how to become a petty criminal. You can expose your bare ass while riding an ATV down a busy highway. Look at those cheeks. You can mail cat shit to the jobs that didn't hire you. Or you could take the chill route and ingest a large amount of marijuana gummies before driving a large bus full of people. Next stop, Mars, man. But there haven't been many opportunities for us to explain how to avoid becoming a petty criminal. Well, today, that is all about to change. Joy was a 19-year-old young woman living in Maryland during the summer of 2010. She had just completed her first year of college and was doing well. She had earned a reputation for being the perfect student. However, she wasn't scared to push back against authority when she felt an injustice had occurred, especially if a professor gave her an unfair grade. Well, I give you an F as a teacher. Joy was feeling like a grown-up, as she had recently gained her personal training license and was dating her dream guy from college. Hey babe, I'm so dreamy. Her love-struck heart continued to yearn for the day that they would see each other again. But for now, they had both returned home for the summer and remained long-distance lovers. So what are you wearing? Arriving back home, Joy was greeted by the familiar vision of a full driveway. Her family always had more vehicles in their possession than other families. This was because Joy's dad was an extreme bargain hunting fixer-upper who was always looking for ways to turn used items into something new. It wasn't just old cars he'd fix up. He once dumpster dove in order to salvage a fancy mattress for Joy. 
The only downfall were the large cuts in the fabric left from a blade of some sort. Her dad was always surprising the family with items from his office job when the company would get rid of or replace something. Some of the items included in these halls were an inkjet printer, a spinny office chair, and his most recent score, boxes and boxes of free carpet squares. His company was replacing all of the carpet in the building, but Joy's father couldn't understand why. The old carpet looked just fine to him. He had previously owned his own carpet cleaning business back in the 90s, so he knew a thing or two about good carpeting. There was short carpet for heavy foot traffic areas, thick padded carpet areas for families to play, and long shag carpet for, well, shagging. The type of carpet the office used was low maintenance carpet squares that fit together seamlessly no matter the size of the space. The carpet was valuable and he had to have it. The building manager agreed to let him take home some of the soon to be discarded carpet squares. And soon his family was filling up the back of their beige 1990 something Dodge Grand Caravan, nicknamed Bertha. In order to fit as many free carpet squares as possible, Bertha's two back rows had to be removed. And because of the extra weight, the spare tire under the back of the vehicle also had to be removed from a cable and metal hook hanging from the undercarriage. Joy's dad had big plans for their new carpet. The family storage unit and utility sheds were due for a makeover. And although everyone else in the family found it to be absurd, he desperately wanted to carpet all of the bathrooms in their home. Despite the protests from the rest of the family, and the obvious fact that her dad's office carpet squares most certainly did not match Joy's mom's bathroom decor, he assured them it would be worth it to never have to walk barefoot on the cold bathroom tile again. But before Joy's family embarked on their carpet renovations, Joy and her 17-year-old brother, Aaron, were planning a summer day trip to New York City. Tagging along would be their mom and Aaron's best friend, Ricky, Ricky was like a second little brother to Joy, which meant double the laughs and double the trouble. I'll shoplift if you do. Their mom wasn't like a regular mom. She was a cool mom who everyone loved having around. The crew had been assembled. Now they just needed to plan transportation. They decided the best route would be to drive from Maryland to Baltimore, then take a commuter bus to New York City. After asking Joy's dad which car would be available to drive to Baltimore, leave in a sketchy parking lot, and then return late that evening in, he replied with one name. Bertha. The fact that Bertha was still half full of carpet wasn't the only issue with driving her. The rear view mirror was non-existent, and the fabric lining attached to the roof was held up only by pushpins to prevent it from hanging down onto passengers. This was all besides the fact that there were still no seats or seatbelts for those riding in the back. But where Bertha lacked in seating, she made up for with carpet squares. Joy's dad removed enough squares for Aaron and Ricky to have space in the back to recline in luxury. With bus tickets in hand, Joy, Aaron, Ricky, and Joy's mom piled into Bertha and left for Baltimore bright and early. Somehow, Joy was given the privilege of driving Bertha. She quickly realized that even with part of the carpet squares taken out, the van rode extremely close to the ground. The extra weight in the back caused the van to sway side to side while picking up speed on the highway. Regardless of the bumpy ride, they made it to the bus on time and made it to the Big Apple. The crew had a super fun day of being tourists and Joy took many RC photos on her digital camera to remember the day by. After a busy day, the bus delivered them back to good old Bertha late that evening. Joy hopped in the driver's seat, her mom called shotgun, and the boys jumped in the back, lounging semi-comfortably on the carpet. Joy took off down the highway as the riders reminisced about the day and told jokes to stay awake after the long, exhausting day of fun. They were all eager to get home, 
But Joy refrained from speeding too much. She knew she couldn't afford a speeding ticket and didn't need any extra attention on their non-regulated ride. The back of the van swayed wildly as they drove, causing Aaron and Ricky to work hard at keeping their balance atop of the carpet squares. They laughed at the scenario, knowing what a ridiculous way this was to end a great day. But just as they began to relax a bit, the van was illuminated with red and blue lights. They were being pulled over by the police. Joy and her mother yelled for the boys to get down and hide as they each buried themselves underneath and in between the boxes of carpet squares. As the officer stepped out of his vehicle and approached the rolling hazard of a van, Joy began to spiral, thinking of all the trouble she was about to be in. Although the registration was in the glove box, it was most likely expired, not to mention the missing rearview mirror and the back row seating. Joy prayed that her license would be enough, that the officer didn't think she was intoxicated, and that he wouldn't notice the two young passengers hiding in the back. Resigned to her fate, she sighed and waited for the officer to approach her window. The officer walked slowly towards Bertha from behind, shining his flashlight across the back and side of the van. He approached the van cautiously until he reached the driver's side door. Joy began to vigorously spin the outdated window crank round and round in order to get it open for the officer. Good evening, ma'am, he said, peering in the window at Joy and her cool mother. Joy gulped and replied with a simple, hello. She fully expected the officer to ask for her license and registration, but instead, another question came. Are you aware that there are sparks flying from the back of your vehicle? Joy was completely caught off guard by this surprising question as she tried to find the words to respond. But the officer continued on. If you sit tight, I will go back and investigate. Joy and her mother grabbed hands as the officer and his flashlight made its way towards the back of their bootleg transport. After a minute or so of examining, the officer walked to the front of the van with the news. So I believe I've found what's causing the problem back there, he stated, as Joy waited for him to tell her to step out of the vehicle and put her hands behind her back. There's a small metal hook hanging by a cable under the rear of your van back there. I guarantee a metal hook bouncing off the pavement at high speeds like this could very well cause sparks to fly. I reached underneath and found a place to secure the hook so it shouldn't drag anymore. You ladies drive safe and have a good night. The women were beyond relieved as they thanked the officer and watched him pull back into the highway. Once the coast was clear, everyone in the van let out a collective sigh of ease. Aaron and Ricky then disentangled themselves to get out of their hiding spot wedged between the carpet boxes. The crew laughed their way back onto the highway and safely home. Well, damn. What a bumpy ride we have all been on. I guess in all fairness, this story didn't really explain exactly how to avoid becoming a petty criminal. In any other world, I'm sure the officer would have noticed at least one of the hazardous features of Bertha, and this is the time they just got lucky. But in my opinion, there was a far worse crime committed not long after this one. Joy's father did end up covering the beautiful custom tiles that they had in their bathroom with, yep, you guessed it, carpet squares. And although the functionality and aesthetic of a carpeted bathroom sounds criminal to most of us, Joy's family never had to deal with cold feet while using the toilet. And that is something we can all learn from. Yeah, I don't think I like carpeted bathrooms. (laughs) Most people don't. And honestly, I had three follow-up questions. I think it was like, give me a backstory of who you were as a person. And then the other one, her brother's name is spelled A-R-O-N. So I wrote her and I was like, is his name pronounced A-R-O-N? I put it in little quotes and spelled it like (laughs) A-Y-E-R-O-N. A-R-O-N? Yeah. Or is it just pronounced like Aaron? 
Anyway, she wrote back and she's like, actually, it's pronounced just like Aaron, even though it's spelled like Aaron. My parents don't like extra unnecessary letters and names. She's like, instead of me having the name Joy Lynn, like two separate things, her name is Joy Lynn. There's no extra N or anything. And then Aaron is just like Aaron with one R and one A and, you know, all the things. So anyway, I thought that was really funny. (laughs) So they don't like extra letters, but they don't mind getting a bunch of extra stuff. Yeah. You know what? You got to fill your life up with a limited amount of things. So Mm. letters had to go and be replaced with carpet. Yeah, we hoard stuff, not (laughs) letters. (laughs) And then the third follow-up question was obviously, did your dad actually carpet the bathrooms? And he did. Mm. I've been in a couple carpets that are that higher pile. And I always think that's so weird. Like if you were going to do something kind of like that shitty rug that I use for my computer area or something like that, where it's super not real thick, I guess it's better. I still don't love it. But come on, I'm never going to want a carpeted bathroom. I'm never Mm going to want that. I just think of poop poo particles in the (laughs) yarn (laughs) or the fuzz and the fur. (laughs) No, it just sounds like moisture and carpeting and poo-poo particles. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's what it sounds like. I also wanted to say this. This was another listener story that was basically written out so beautifully and well for me. I love them. That I made my own tweaks, but I mean, it was so detailed. I didn't have to ask any real details about the crime itself at all. I mean, I Mm. had everything. That's why maybe I struggled a little bit more on reading today. I don't know, because it's not not my word. It's not my story. It's not something that I really thought through. It's something that I was given and then you tweak it a bit. Mm -hmm. So it is different. Regardless, I'm sure it'll come out fine, but my God, I was stuttering all over the place. Yeah, we've all had those bad days that luckily I don't remember most of what the stories are that I struggled on anymore when I go back and listen to them. Ah, thank God for that. Yeah. So one very important question about the feng shui of all this carpeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did the carpet match the drapes? (laughs) (laughs) I so should have made that joke. You're so right. That was a missed opportunity. Hey, it's totally all right. But you just took it. So... Not missed. I didn't Not want it to be missed. All. Yeah, it still needed to be somewhere. Um, I don't know. Mm. That should have been another follow up question. <laughs> Joy, Joy, Joy let it. us know. <laughs> yeah. I do like the question about the carpeted bathrooms, though, because I've yeah. seen very few in my life, but I've always been mm-hmm. kind of weirded out by them. Yeah. Write us in. Let us know what your thoughts are on carpeted bathrooms. Do you have one? Did we offend you? Or do you know a weirdo that has one? I'm just curious. I don't think they're very common anymore. I do not think they are common at all. My childhood best friend had one in her home when we grew up. I remember that. But even then, I felt like, huh, this is weird. I've never seen this before. Kayla's family... They had one little toilet room right off the living room that all anything was in there was a toilet and a sink. Yeah. I think that was carpeted, but they also had a black toilet in there. Oh, weird. And I tell you, a black toilet is very strange. Huh. It's like, what's going on in there? <laughs> yeah, it's mysterious and deep. <gasps> But I love our listeners and just you guys. Thank you. And if you do send us a story and it's beautifully written and so detailed, like that is so helpful. Mm -hmm. And if we don't get to it for months and months, we love you. I love the listener stories that get it, like get Mm -hmm. what we do, because what other podcast can you send in a story of carpeting squares in the back of a van and not getting arrested? I mean, I guarantee it. There are one star reviewers out there that say... These people are so unaware. Why are they telling stories that are this dumb? They don't get us. That's they don't why. get it. And I love that other people jump on board with it. That's why oh. I like the listener stories and the personal stuff, because the dumb criminals and the big things they do are fun. Yeah. But then also just the funny stories that we all kind of have, you know, we all have one like that. <laughs> everyone has to. Not everyone has this insane, big, true crime thing that happens to them, right? Yeah. Like those are very rare. But all of us have done something stupid that was a misdemeanor, right? or borderline or just something weird this one no crime was well a crime was committed but no punishment happened they got away with it and it was a very small little thing everyone was safe that's the shit that i love and yeah you're right no other podcast is doing that and the funny thing too is to joy this is a moment that's really stuck with her Mm -hmm. in some of these situations like our listener story about the laxative cookies and stuff like that right they still are sort of i don't want to say traumatic but they really imprint themselves on our mind Mm -hmm. and so yeah sure it sounds like a very dumb small thing when somebody tells you about it but that's the fun thing about us making them in the full-blown stories 
sometimes in podcasts they'll tell a story and it's one of those you had to be their stories Mm -hmm. and i hate you had to be their stories Mm -hmm. because that usually is your way out being like oops that story sucked you just had to be there yeah but the fun thing about what we do is we build that atmosphere back up so people can kind of feel like they experience that kind of cringe of the moment or because the cringiness of that moment will stick with joy forever i know she'll never forget it even though yeah, you bring it up to somebody and they'll be like, that's a funny story, but they don't care. Right, right, you right. Know? Like nothing insane happened. She didn't get in trouble. But just the feeling of the thought that she might have been. I mean, really, she could have gotten in pretty big trouble. You got people not wearing seatbelts. You got no rear view mirror. I thought that mm-hmm. was like a whole fine all on its own. In the mystery leading up to it, too. Yeah. I didn't know where you were going with the story. I'm sure. I thought, were these secretly stolen carpets? What's going on? Like, did that guy actually say he could have them, but he really didn't know right yeah i know there was a lot to it Mm -hmm. the buildup of her she was coming home for the summer what was gonna happen a lot about her dad in the middle and then the dad's not even involved in the actual part but he's at fault for it i yeah (laughs) i mean he gave him bertha with all the carpet bertha oh god and also can i just say the fact that her van was named Bertha, and that has been a name that i've used in past crimes Mm -hmm. oh that just brought me so much joy Joy brought me so much joy, Joy. We even had a listener <laughs> say they had a barefoot Bertha too. Yeah. I can't remember if that was in a listener story or just in an email. But Why is it always got to be a Bertha? Yeah. Millennials killed the Bertha. Nobody uses that name anymore. No. Well, that story was great. I'm so glad that we had a listener story. Thank you, Joy. Yeah, those are always a fun change to do. And that's what the show originally was really set up on, was just building up things that weren't big deals. Mm -hmm. So it's fun to get back to that, because sometimes our stuff gets pretty grand now. Oh, I know. It's still not always super big. But yeah, the pendulum swings both ways pretty nicely. Yeah, like this one didn't affect many people. So this week, I've got a story for you. And I find this funny that... You know, every year we get the 420 episode. Mm -hmm. Every year we do Christmas episodes, Mm -hmm. Halloween episodes. This will be the second year in a row that I'm going to talk football at the start of the football season. Okay, yeah. Last year I was about to do a football story, but I didn't do the story. But I did have the fun football kind of trivia-ish game where you lined up the punishments. Yeah. This year I'm going to do a straight up football story because this just needed a little bit of football-ness. A lot of people are going to be cheering on our team for this one, so. Yeah. (laughs) So without any more ado, go team. It's that time of year again. Unathletic men wearing jerseys. Velveeta cheese goes into a state of scarcity. And Sundays become twice as sacred. We have made it to another year of football season. And boy, have I been ready. For the last six months, what little bit of masculinity I have has been in a state of hibernation, just waiting for all of my favorite sports stars to don tight pants and shoulder pads once again. The white noise of a crowd's cheers will roar, interrupted only by sounds of skulls cracking. And we will all be force-fed ads about beers, trucks, and boner pills. This is a chance for unimpressive men to attach their self-worth to the accomplishments of actual hardworking men. Fans of winning teams have a chance to puff out their chest and feel superior to others, while fans of losing teams, well, they can blame their team sucking for why they haven't achieved their personal goals. Can you guess which I am? Go Chiefs. But enough about the game itself. I wanna talk about the main event of this sports ball ritual. The thing that makes it easier for every partner and parent that isn't actually interested in what's happening on the TV. Football food. Oh yeah, mama. The cheese. The grease. The multiple desserts. The carbs. And the drinks. Apps on apps on apps. The main course before the main main course. And one bottle of Pepto-Bismol with the weight of the world on its shoulders. If you ask my mother, my sister, or Emily, what's the best part of football being back? They would hands down say, the football food. My mom may actually say that her favorite part is seeing me more often, but that's okay. Who can blame her for that? Football food is a chance for Americans to be the most American they can be, mindlessly consuming while watching ads for the next thing they will consume. And how much you consume is emotionally driven by the way you experience what's on the screen. Did your quarterback get a boo-boo? causing him to sit the rest of the game out while your defense is giving up a ton of points to the opposing team? 
Then get up there and have a second plate of salted nachos covered in cholesterol, you sad sack. How else are you supposed to cope with these emotions? Is your team completely dunking on a weaker opponent and breaking records for how much you can rub it in another team's face? You gonna cry, little baby? Then throw two pieces of cake into a blender with ice cream and Bud Light. This calls for a celebration. And when it's all said and done, whether your team wins or loses, you can take your hurt tummy over to Facebook and make a status about how these athletes are paid too much and what they do isn't all that impressive. Even though typing that paragraph was enough to leave you winded. As you can see, I have some thoughts and opinions on football food. I absolutely love the sport and the treats that come along with it, but I have a bit more of a challenge on my hands this year. Working on my relationship with food and being present with my body has been a lot of work, and I mean that within regularly controlled evenings at home. But social events and holidays built around food make me very nervous. The more social stimulation and distractions I encounter around food can really challenge my self-control. Once the season officially kicks off, I know each week is going to be a new battle to fight. Because of my excitement for the new league year and my mental growth during the eating side of things, I felt like today was the perfect day to tell this story. So grab a couple extra napkins and refill your drink before you sit down because things are about to get saucy. Vera was a 66-year-old food service director for the Harvey School District in Illinois. With her background in health and a great knowledge of balancing finances, there was no job better fit for a woman of Vera's skills. She planned out the month's menus for the school, took count of what dishes were most popular, and worked to give the kids and faculty more of what they wanted. Not only was the health side of things a passion for Vera, but she also just loved the people. Each morning, she was greeted by students that she didn't even know by name, but by favorite lunch of choice. Stromboli Steve would hold the door open for her, Principal Pepperoni Pizza parked next to her at the parking lot, and the janitor she knew only as Turkey Sandwich would always leave love notes on her desk. Your floor isn't the only thing that's wet? She was the queen of the district, and everybody wanted to be friends with Vera. But in 2020, things took a sharp and drastic turn. Cases of COVID-19 began to rise as things turned into a full-blown pandemic. In no time, students were taking laptops home and teachers were learning how to log into Zoom. The classroom went from being a sacred place of study to an abstract space on a computer screen, connecting children from the comfort of their own homes. Of course, for Vera, remote learning wasn't a problem. Her job was still necessary as the school continued providing breakfasts and lunches to students but it was pretty difficult to maintain the high status she had before with everyone being in lockdown. Even if she did choose to work in her office, the only person in the building would be Turkey Sandwich, staring at her from a distance and breathing heavily. <sighs> because of this, Vera's life as a social butterfly was put on hold. She was an extrovert forced to live the life of an introvert. Like so many, Vera had to find ways to socialize in a world shut down. She tried everything. Zoom book clubs, live stream Zumba workouts, and meal of the day food photography groups on Facebook. Each one gave her a bit of a social thrill, but they ultimately didn't fulfill her. Reading books was terribly boring. Zumba made her living room smell like a gym. And the lighting in her kitchen was so bad, members of the Facebook group just sad reacted all of her submissions. Although modern technology was helping many people of the world connect during this trying time, it was doing no favors for Vera. All hope seemed lost until a late July phone call changed everything. Vera looked at the caller ID of her cell, seeing that it was Principal Pepperoni Pizza. She answered cautiously, bracing herself for what work matter this must be related to. Hey Vera, it's Principal Hank. I know things have been tough and we aren't going to be starting the school year in person. So I figured we could find a way to help us all connect, Principal Pepperoni Pizza said. The prospect of staying social with people who already looked up to her was music to Vera's ears. She excitedly responded. Yes, I would love to. What are we doing? I'll send you an invite to your email. We are all going to start a fantasy football league, the principal exclaimed. Oh dear, Vera reacted. I don't know anything about football and I've never had a fantasy in my life. Principal Pepperoni confronted his service director. It's easy. All you have to do is watch football games 
and shit-talk your friends by finding fresh ways of referencing male sexual organs. It's a blast! A bit skeptical, Vera agreed to join. She went over to her home computer and opened the email from Principal Pepperoni Pizza. In an instant, her screen was overtaken by NFL-branded content in a font style that one could only describe as manly. A random Fallout Boy song played, as highlights of macho men in helmets played in a mini video player at the bottom of her screen. Welcome to the Fantasy Football League for Men with Big Wieners. The page header read, with a Join Now button below. Vera joined and was immediately teleported to the league's homepage. There she saw a message board compiled of all of her favorite coworkers using dick jokes to put each other down. Prepare to get spanked by the Board of Education, the principal typed in all caps to the timid school counselor. Try that shit in my house and I'll put my balls on your dinner plate, she typed back, asserting her dominance early. Vera jumped headfirst into the online word brawl, telling Principal Pepperoni that his willy smells like old cheese. Notifications of laugh reacts appeared on her screen as everyone loved her dick-related diss. The principal even sent her a direct message saying, You're a natural, Vera. That's how you play fantasy football. Football. Throughout the next week, Vera prepared herself for the upcoming season. Sunday was the big day, and everyone was going to Zoom watch football together for seven straight hours. See all you dinky winkies Sunday for the Zoom meet. Don't forget your football food, the principal posted on the public board. Vera gasped in horror. The football food. She had spent so much time studying players' projections and looking up the word penis in a thesaurus that she completely forgot to prepare the food. The only thing she was planning on eating was some oatmeal. But spending the last week in this machismo world of football and dick measuring, she knew size mattered and a bowl of hot wet oats wasn't going to intimidate anyone. She put on her face mask and went to the store, only to find that all of her local grocers were sold out of football food. All she could do was go back home and think of ways to add some masculinity to her oatmeal. But just as she was considering throwing a hot dog in her oats for a little phallic spice, she heard a notification pop up on her work computer. Vera's new online social life had put her job on the back burner. She still needed to finalize the menu for next week's lunch. Logging into her work computer, she brought her mouse over to submit the lunch and breakfast orders. But before accepting the charges, she had a very curious idea. She had been making lunch orders for her district for years, but she never checked to see what football food the company provided. With a hunger in her gut, Vera typed in, chicken wings, and was amazed at the results. Not only were they in stock, but they were overstocked. Unlimited cases of chicken wings, all for the taking. With her connections, it wouldn't be hard to order one case and take it off the truck for herself. In an act of pure football food desperation, Vera added a 40-pound case of 300 chicken wings to her works cart and finalized the purchase. The hijacking of the wings was easy. She waited alone at the school for the delivery, signed for the order, and put the case in her car once the food truck left. A few hours later, Vera logged into her fantasy football Zoom call, surrounded by mounds and mounds of fried flats and drumettes. She was the wing queen. That's a lot of wings you got there, Vera. Stromboli Steve said, astounded at the 66-year-old's appetite. Thanks. It's the only way I can keep this huge hog in my pants fed. Vera responded, showing everyone that she came ready to play some fantasy football. Vera's first Sunday was a blast. She ate way too many chicken wings and had a good time making fun of the weaker people in the league. It couldn't have gone any better. But as the next week came around, she faced a similar situation at the store. What started as a one-time-only chicken heist had become an every Sunday ritual. As the season went on, she began adopting wing meals for Monday and Thursday night games as well, until she had developed a full-blown addiction to the chicken. By the time the season had ended, Vera couldn't quit. She had worked her way up to two packs a day, even finding ways of making cinnamon roll flavored chicken wings for breakfast too. The school year ended and Vera's regular chicken wing orders for school lunches became summer school lunch orders. With her connections, and the different excuses for why students need food, Vera would never have to pay for chicken again. Unfortunately for Vera, the stolen wings caused her to fly too close to the sun. After a year and a half of this magnificent lifestyle, she met her most formidable foe, not in the form of a fantasy football opponent, but in the form of an audit. 
During the COVID-19 pandemic, Vera Liddell, a 66-year-old food service director for the Harvey School District of Illinois, stole $1.5 million worth of food, most of which being chicken wings. From July 2020 to January 2022, Vera would order lunches and breakfast for remote students, only to purchase extra chicken wing cases for the school district to pay for. Through the span of her one and a half year heist, Vera had stolen 11,000 cases of chicken wings, amongst other foods. During an audit performed in January of 2022, auditors found that the district had overspent its yearly food budget by $300,000 within just the first half of the school year. According to WGN, Gordon food service workers were all familiar with Vera due to the massive amount of chicken wings she would order. This was especially suspect, as the school district does not serve food to children that have bones. Information on what was done with the $1.5 million worth of chicken wings was never given. Vera Liddell was charged with felony continuing financial crimes enterprise and theft of more than $1 million, according to Cook County State's Attorney's Office. She was held on a $150,000 bond. Okay, so technically the true story behind it all wasn't about football. But we gotta speculate, right? Football food can be some of the most addictive foods out there. Deep fried, sometimes cheesy, and always saucy. It seeps into your pores and fills your heart in more ways than one. But fried football food can be a slippery slope. Mindlessly eating addictive foods will pay a toll. And in this case, that toll was $1.5 million. The court date for Vera was held on February of 2023, but all tracking on the case was lost after that. I'm sure she went to jail for a heist of this size. But really, I feel for Vera. Wings are good as hell. Whether you eat just one or 11,000 cases worth, it's hard to stop. The one silver lining to all of this is that schools and prisons usually share the same food services. And although I consider that a strange and sad thing for our country, it may just work in Vera's favor. So whether you're a football fan or you just get dragged into watching a game with someone, sink your teeth into some greasy, fried meat and think about Vera, because we can only hope that the world works poetically enough to grant her wing night in prison. That is so many wings. Isn't that ridiculous? When you first said she placed her first order of 300, mm -hmm. I was like, whoa, that's a lot. Right. And then when it just kept growing and growing and growing, my mind is blown. What the hell? Okay. Like I said, articles do not say what she did with them. 11,000 cases in a year and a half. They liked to point out that it was a kind of low income district. So a lot of the people didn't have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe she was keeping for herself and literally eating them for every meal. Maybe even donating them and giving them to kids around that didn't have money. because It was a very low income area. But again, they don't really say. I will say that it felt like the news articles wanted to say something, but they weren't saying it. I think they just wanted to straight up say this place is poor, I think is what they mm. wanted to say. But they didn't really straight up say it. So I can't say that she's a hero, you know, because yeah. I don't really know. Yeah. Was she doing? Uh, but maybe. But I will say that it is very strange that you work at school. If you were trying to do that, you would have probably gotten food that would have been a little more sneaky to hide in there instead of chicken wings. I don't know why being a mom that has a kid at school didn't immediately think there's a wing and a chicken wing. That's not safe. And what the hell? That would never be a thing. But as soon as you actually verbalized that, I was like, mm -hmm. well, yeah, of course. This food service place is going to be like, huh? That's really interesting because mm -hmm. kids can choke on wings and why are there so many? Yeah, why am I paying for so many wings to come to my school? They said that she would go to the company in the school van, pick up the stuff, and then on her way back to the school, just drop off her cases at her house and then drop the rest off back at the school. I have so many questions. So obviously, I wish I knew exactly what happened <laughs> to all those damn wings, because personally, I don't think she ate all of them. That would be so many yeah. unless she had the largest family of all time that lived with her. Maybe she kept them. But I guarantee she was probably freezing them, flinging them. I don't know. But she probably shared them, I would imagine. I would assume. So it's hard for me to really hate on her for that because <laughs> people need food. Hello. Mm -hmm. However, 
When you said the school had gone over budget, what was it like three hundred thousand for the year? The yearly budget was over three hundred thousand, and they were only halfway into the year. Yeah, if you're trying to help your community and you're trying to feed people, like yes, I get that. But also, what is that going to do to your school? The school's probably already struggling plenty, especially yeah. being like I said. It seems it's a low income district. I'm sure the school's probably not giving a whole lot of help either. Damn. Yeah, maybe if she was like trying to help and give all this food out. It's a weird choice. Mm -hmm. It's a perishable item, which really makes me like the way that you came up with this. It's either like wings are her favorite thing in the world or I don't know. Meat is very valuable. Yeah. I don't know. Chicken is like the cheapest of the meats, though. I don't know. I don't know either. It, it was so hard for me to do because like, obviously I wanted to do the football food thing because that's just so funny. And even I think one of the articles somebody was like, that's one weird way to do a Super Bowl party or something like that. Like yeah. witty news writers. But it was so hard to figure out because I can't think of a world where this person just isn't a dumb criminal. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. even if you're a hero and you're helping your community, yeah. you should have maybe switched around the types of food yeah. a little bit, made it things that your school covers. So you could at least kind of try to get out of it. Mm -hmm. You weren't worried about how it was looking on the books to have blown your yearly fund there. Yeah, She ordered the food ahead. And I think she also did financial stuff. When you have that kind of control, it's easier to steal things when you can do the accounting oh, stuff. Oh, my God. Yeah. So if you're going out here only getting a food your school doesn't cover and you're mm -hmm. not even paying attention to make sure that you're not spending too much to be noticed. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine any world where this wasn't just you're not a smart person. Yeah. And it's the excessiveness. It's like, why? <laughs> why chicken wings? That's why I made the joke about cinnamon roll flavored chicken wings. There is only so much you can do. But I mean, I guess you opened the world wide open with that. Yeah. I would have loved it if they would have just said that she was backdoor supplying a restaurant in town and making money or something like that yeah. would have been cool too but i have nothing to really go off of we will never really know unless vera you want to hit us up <laughs> <laughs> after hearing this vera's not going to want to talk to us I don't no think. she's not <laughs> connections oh i didn't even think about that i was just focusing on my ability to read later oh my god the whole episode <laughs> me too <laughs> me too okay i have found the connection okay having one item in excess okay so a ton of carpet squares okay a ton of chicken wings she very well could have been hoarding chicken just as much as daddy was hoarding yes carpet yeah so just an excess of hoarded materials of one thing i like that that is a really obscure connection but that's what i got but that is a good connection yeah it really is that is kind of a really weird thing that they both specifically did yeah what you gonna do with all that stuff you got yeah that's a lot of carpet mm -hmm. that's a lot of chicken wings Eleven thousand. that's cases Ugh. so you're talking more than three hundred thousand chicken wings <laughs> <laughs> that is so much i can't get over that but yeah, that's our connection this week. Next weekend, we'll not have an episode. I am going to be at CrimeCon and with my car issues and everything else going on, there's no way in hell I was going to be having a episode completely ready in time for that. So uh, I'm sorry, guys, you'll have to miss us for a week. I think we're going to be doing a feed drop with my good friend Shane Waters. So we're going to have a week off. The week after that will be an episode that I record before I leave. So it won't be about CrimeCon. We'll get you updated. Don't worry. Oh, man. Yeah. You might miss us a little bit next week. But if you get on social media, I think, Trevin, if you could take so many little videos and pictures and maybe I can compile them as you're making them or something. We sure. can keep people up to date. Kind of like they're at CrimeCon with you. So yeah. if you miss us, go to our social medias. We'll try our best to keep that updated and you can follow along at CrimeCon. I am so excited that you're going. So jealous. I have no idea what to expect. Whew, you're going to meet so many, so many cool people. Uh, I can't wait. But until then, guys, I hope you are all having a great week. And just remember, no matter the crime, big or small, in the end, we're all doomed. Doomed to hoard something obscure. <laughs> Bye. See ya. I'm sorry if your name is Bertha, but for everyone else out there, thank you so much for listening to our show. And do you have the tastiest, greasiest, sauciest football foods? Share some photos with us on social media. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or Threads. Live, laugh, larceny. And if you have a listener petty crime story... 
We might wait a few months, but we will get to it eventually. So send us yours to livelaughlarceny at gmail.com. And give our show the same rating I gave the first shop that looked at my car. They couldn't help me, but damn, they were nice. Five stars. Rate our podcast on Apple, Spotify, or Good Pods. Share some photos with us on social media. Live, laugh, larceny at Gmail. Wait a minute. No, no, no. <laughs> Follow us at live, la- live, laugh, larceny. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Facebook. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, 